Welcome to 24 Hour Sports. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. As you can see here, we're doing a Detroit Lions offseason guide. This is the first one. I'm going to be doing many more. So if you want to see a team in the next offseason guide, comment your team. Comment, I want to see this next down below. To see the next offseason guide, we got to get this video to 100 likes. But with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so the notable free agents that we have for the Detroit Lions are Evan Brown, DJ Chark, and Deshaun Elliott. I know guys are thinking about people like Jamal Williams, Alex, I can't even pronounce his last name, but Alex Anzalone, I believe, and Isaiah Bugs, guys of that nature. But these are the guys who are going to cost you the most. And what I'm going to do right here, <clears throat> I'm just going to show the prices, let everybody see that. So DJ Chark, you know, he's going, all of these guys are roughly going about $10 million per year on the market value according to SpotRack. So now we look at that. But a key thing I want to add in, guys that we're going to cut are, it's, a, it's basically a given, you know, looking around the reports, reading everything. Michael Brockers is going to get cut. So that's going to add you an automatic $10 million in cap space. And on top of that, we got Harris, who's going to add you another $4 million. So... Now, we're looking at other options to cap space. How can we get more cap space? Because once we re-sign these guys, then we're going to be strapped right back. $32 million, get DJ Chark. You know, we're going to be back. <laughs> we're going to be back right broke. So, these are the other options to cap space to get us back in the free agent market because we're really looking for a defensive tackle. I don't think there's any corners that we're looking for, but we're looking for a defensive tackle so we can attack corner in the draft. Personally, what I would do right here, I would let DJ Chark test his market in the free agency, and that's going to leave me with the cut with a little more money, a little more freedom to do things and see what I want to do going into the free agency. Right here, these are our options to cap space. We got we got Viatai and we got Romeo Aquara. Um Viatai, if we cut him, we add 6.5 million in cap space. Romeo Aquara, if we cut him, we add 7.5 million in cap space. One thing I want to add to, I've been watching these offseason guys, and it's not realistic. You're just adding your favorite players on the teams or adding people who will make your team great, but you're not looking into the logistics, the money side of it, and how would it really play out in the real world. You know, I'm going from a realistic point of view, and I think a lot of Detroit Lions fans will like that. That fan base has shown love to this channel, and that's why this team is first. So now, like I said, these are our options to cap space. And what I would do right here, I would cut both of them. Romeo Quara, you know, you can say, you can make the argument that since he came back in the lineup, the defense has been better. I think also some of that can be, a, you know, attested to the emergence of James Houston coming in those third down passing situations and wreaking havoc, him and Aiden Hutchinson just dominating. But, you know, Viatai, a guy who's had that back surgery, how can he really come back? And I think Jonah Jackson and Evan Brown, you're paying Evan Brown. Why would you bring back Viatai to add to that? I understand the depth situation, but I think maybe in the second round, third round, you can come back through and address that interior offensive line. Okay, so now next, current cap space. This is where we're heading into the free agent market. We got $25 million. Let's go ahead and head over to free agency. Okay, so as you can see to the left, these are some of the players I would re-sign. You know, you can take this however you want to go. You can look at it from your perspective, from all perspective, but this is how I would do it, just showing that. So Deshaun Elliott is a guy I resigned. I think safeties are a dime a dozen. We need him, especially in a poor secondary. And we're going to address some other situations like corner, but Deshaun Elliott, we got to keep him. Evan Brown, we kept him as well. I like the offensive line. We played well going late into the se all season, basically. We ran the ball. We protected well. We had a top five offense. Jamal Williams, another guy who I re-signed. So, we're looking. I know the defensive tackle is a position we have to attack. So, this is what I want to talk about right here. I see a lot of guys linking De'Ron Payne to the Detroit Lions. But let's look at what we potentially miss out with De'Ron Payne. If we get De'Ron Payne, we lose potential key players. We might lose Alex Anzalone. Oh, my gosh. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> we might lose him. We might lose Isaiah Bugs, And we might not be able to retain DJ Chark. But in a perfect world, let's look at a guy like Puna Ford, another guy who is not listed on this visual, Dalvin Tomlinson, previously paid for the Minnesota Vikings. Look at those type of guys. 
and they're above average interior defensive linemen. I think that's a perfect world. Puna Ford going around $9 million. Looking at Deron Payne, he's going around $20 million, $19 million. So I think I would do this. In a perfect world, you know, we would get Puna Ford. We would get a Dalvin Tomlinson. We might keep Chark, Azalone, Bugs, but I'm not doing that. I personally would go with Deron Payne because I think he's – Puna Ford is above average, but I think Deron Payne is above, above average. I wouldn't say he's elite, but I think he's above, above average. He's in one of those tiers. Dominant in the middle of the field. Production, big guy coming out of Alabama. I would go with that. And when I do this – this allows me to maybe attack receiver in the lower rounds of the draft. I know I'm going to attack interior offensive linemen. I need some more depth. I know with my first two picks, I'm going to attack edge and I'm going to attack corner. A lot of people see a linebacker, and that's a possibility. There's some, you know, some linebackers who you can sneak in that second round if you don't go interior or if you don't go receiver. I think Josh Reynolds, Khalif Raymond coming back off injury, I think that's pretty solid. Jamison Williams, we have to remember, this is a guy who's supposed to be a number one threat speedster can run the route tree that is what we have coming back he didn't play a full season this year dealing coming off that acl but next year he is full go we all gone and then we got Amon ross st brown maybe we get a big receiver is the number three but i like khalif raymond i like josh reynolds so like i said i would get the ron Payne right here we might lose as long we might lose bugs we definitely not gonna be able to keep chart if we get the ron pain so now this takes us into the draft And right here, a key thing you see is 2023 NFL draft board. I did a draft board rather than doing a, you know, who would I pick or who should we pick because you never know how these things work. I see a lot of Detroit Lions fans talking about trading. I would stay, I would stay put with 6 and 18. I like those picks. I think they can help me attack both positions that I need to attack. And I'm going to just reveal my big bird. Number one, I got Miles Murphy. Number two, I got Tyree Wilson. Number three, I got Devon Witherspoon. Key thing I want to speak to Devon Witherspoon. I like Joey Porter as maybe my cornerback one. I like Cam Smith too. I like Christian Gonzalez. But looking at his athletic profile and looking at the film, he's shooting up a lot of draft boards. I think this is a guy who I would give it about a 40 to 50% chance you may see him on your team. Whether it's at 6 or 18, that's going to depend on the pre-draft process. But this is a guy who you may see in a Lions uniform. Joey Porter, Christian Gonzalez, Michael Mayer. I like Brock Wright. I know he's going to be a cog on that team. But I think you can add maybe if you can get somebody better, then do it. This is only if you don't. This would be the scenario where you go corner first. And another guy on here, another guy on here too, Trenton Simpson, maybe a Noah Sewell. If you're looking at linebacker or do you want to go linebacker later on, I think you could go tight end later on. But just looking at the guys who are talented, Dalton Kincaid, Michael Mayer, good, good football players. Cam Smith, Brian Branch, and like I said, Trenton Simpson to round that out. Noah Sue, another linebacker I like. But those are the guys on my big board. And just to recap, you know, how we did, how we went on with this offseason from the beginning. Notable free agents, we went through that. I decided to let DJ Chark test the market. Options to cap space, I cut Viatai, I cut Oquara. When we seen Deron Payne in the free agency, we took that route. And, you know, this cost us to lose out on Chark, maybe Anzalone, and even Bugs. But we got a solidified defensive tackle. We got, you know, Tyree Wilson, what are those guys, whoever we decide to draft. Um, Let me know how you grade my 2023 offseason guy for the Detroit Lions. I think I did pretty good. I think with these moves, you'll be set to have a playoff return and do something great next season. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, go and watch my James Houston or my Aiden Hutchinson film breakdowns. It's amazing. Thank you for watching.